Hi, how are you? Lovely to see all of you. Uh, so today we're going to go on a journey called Jake's Existential Crisis. It's going to be fantastic. And in this existential crisis that I have, generally always, we're going to talk about the digital self, that version of us that we like to share online. Because I think, instinctively, we all like to share ourselves, right? We like to have people think that what we think is important, that we're valuable, that we matter. And so about a week ago, I was talking to the lovely man who was just on stage, Vlad, and I told him that I didn't want to be here, <laughs> that I wasn't going to come anymore. And the reason was I didn't think my idea was worth spreading. So it was the opposite of what this whole event is for. I didn't think the version of myself that was going to be here today was the version that I wanted to express, that I thought lived up to the idea of me in this setting. But this is a, a platform, both figuratively and literally. It, my mind is no different than Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram, YouTube, etc. And when we think about our self, hey, there it is, it's, to me, it, it fractures depending on the platform that you are on, because every piece of social media allows you to share yourself in a different way. And so as we, we fracture and split across social media, our self, to me, becomes what I have to call ourselves with an F, not a V, I don't know, I'm clever, I'm not really. Uh, but it, it was this interesting thought in my mind of, of who is this version that I'm going to be here versus who am I on YouTube versus who am I in real life, who am I on Twitter and Instagram, so on and so forth. But let me just back up one second. Hi, I'm Jake, good to see you. I also added an arrow just to really emphasize that that's me. But I guess if you're looking at this angle, the arrow fits. I didn't know where this was going to be. I should have done it at an angle. That's my bad. But also, ooh, if you look at the arrow, that's actually, sorry, a side note. Uh, if you cover the bottom of it and just look at the top, it kind of looks like an open book. What a coincidence, because I'm expressing myself. So I'm kind of like an open book. And uh, I don't know, that's neat. Books are neat. This all, just uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Yesterday, there was a speech coach, two of them, they're lovely. And they said that uh, an important thing to do is connect with the audience. So this was me trying to seem organic and natural and connect. But it's all scripted and planned. Uh, nothing's real. <laughs> Just to let you know. Uh, so where was I? Oh, yeah, I was talking about myself, uh, which is wonderful because I can do that very naturally and organically. So what do I do? Well, as, as we heard in the introduction, I make videos on YouTube. That's what I'm most well known for. I have a channel called Vsauce3, and I talk about science. I use pop culture to explain whatever I'm curious about, be it physics or chemistry, philosophy, history, anything. And there I am. Oh, look at me. So young. So new to the world. So I, I like to use things, for example, in this one, Home Alone. Fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, would highly recommend. It's a real treat for the eyes. And in that movie, there's a lot of traps. So I use those traps to express momentum and force and how objects transfer heat to other objects. And it's it's... Learning by accident is what I like to think of it as, accidental learning. You go in thinking one thing, and you come out maybe hopefully knowing something else. And it's very exciting, and to me, it's fun stuff. Emphasize fun stuff by having it on the slide. There we go. Another example of this, I, I also use video games. So for example, Fallout. Great game, highly recommend as well. And in that, we can talk about nuclear war and radiation and all the devastation that would happen within that. The, terribleness of it all and how it would wipe out all of humanity as we know it and everyone that's left is just miserable. You know, fun stuff. And YouTube is, is my preferred platform of, of choice. It allows me to express myself in a way that nothing else does. I can take these thoughts and ideas that are in my head and I can share them and hopefully it, it's fulfilling enough for, for the audience and I've been lucky enough to find one. But it isn't the only social media that I use. It's just a part of me. It isn't all of me. And this is me being honest with you. Again, everything's a lie. This is all planned. Literally, the script is right in front of me right here. And now it tells me to go to the next slide. So there we go. So in total, that's the, the number of people that follow me on social media in total. Cool. But what does it mean? Nothing. It doesn't mean that my thoughts or feelings are more valuable than yours or anybody else's. I'm not more important than anyone. If anything, what this means to me is that I'm more self-conscious about myself. I, I don't really know why I share, I guess because I want approval, and this hopefully does it for me, but there's things that I don't really share, that I don't really talk about. 
because we want people to, to care about us, right? That's the reason that we, we do these things. And it's me sharing, hopefully across all these platforms, a piece of my life that I think will get the best reaction because social media is curation. We have thoughts every single day. You're thinking right now, I hope, because if you're not thinking, then you're probably in a coma, which, hey, thanks for buying a ticket and showing up. That's impressive. And now that I talked about thinking, you're probably thinking about thinking, I'm sorry, oh, that's rough. But you're not going to tweet about it. You're not going to be like, oh, I just thought today. No, you're going to take a certain moment that happened during that day and you're going to put that online. That's now you. That's what you think people care about. And if they don't care about it, you're not going to post it anymore. So you've curated your life for this version of yourself that you think people want to see on the internet. A few examples of this. I really like examples. As I used to have a show called Fact Surgery, which was a stop motion animation show, because I love stop motion. I think stop motion is one of the most beautiful ways to express oneself in the form of, of animation and video. Unfortunately, other people didn't particularly think that, so I stopped doing that show. It, it ended. It's gone now. Even though it's still important to me in here and in here, but to an audience, they didn't like it, so I'm done. Another uh, kind of stupid example who here has like an Apple Watch or a smartwatch? Woo! There's like five of us. We did it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we can share each other's heartbeats later. Um, <laughs> so I thought it was a really cool thing when I got it. I was like, this is awesome! And I apologize, you have to look at this GIF forever. I didn't come prepared with other slides. Um, but I, I made it, I posted it, and the, then people were like, no, you're an idiot. Apple's stupid, you're stupid, I respect you less. Literally, that was one of the comments I got, was that people respected me less. So I deleted that Instagram post, and I never talk about Apple ever again. And I don't post that kind of stuff anymore. It's changed. Uh, hmm. So where to go from here? <laughs> I'll just give you a second to read that, and on to the next. What we post online, in my mind, is supposed to be a reflection of us, but I think what it's become is a reflection of what we want people to think that we're like the ideal version of ourselves. It's personality by committee. We strip the things that we like and we, we save them. We hold on to them for later to then share with others. So what are we left with? I don't know, but not something that I particularly like. I'm just left with these things that I don't really want anymore because I've given the things that I do like to other people. That's theirs now. Yay! You can have it, but it's a little appetizer. It's popcorn. It's not something real. And so every time I post, every time I post a video is like the happiest that I am. You post it and you're like, yes! It's this endorphin that you get, that satisfaction, and maybe you need that because you want people to give you value, I'm not sure, but it's this high that you chase, and you keep doing it until you get to the next one. So when I post a video, I'm like, yeah, I did it! And then the whole chain starts again. And it just keeps going and going. Also, I feel like I'm very depressing. I apologize. You just start out your mornings, and here I am in a big old rain cloud on your life. And I'm also in black. But I have a Nintendo symbol, that's cool. <laughs> Yay! So for me, the larger that number grows, that 4.1 million, the less I, I feel like myself. Because people are, are complex, right? I think we all are. We have thoughts and feelings and emotions, yet we only share a select few of them. And you can't do that just on one platform. You can't just express yourself entirely in a tweet or in a YouTube video or on a TEDx stage. There's, there's more to you. So I think about things like this morning, I like to floss. Flossing is really good for you, by the way. I uh, would highly recommend it. But one thing that I love about flossing is that it hurts. <laughs> Woo! Um, and so when I was flossing, you know, there's always a little bit of dried blood that comes up on the floss after you're done. Should I share that? Probably not, but I just did. So live with it. Here we are. This is my world. You exist in this for the next five minutes. Oh, two minutes and 45 seconds. Dang it. I was way off on my time. But anyway, do I want to share that? Probably not. And if I do, and if people don't like it, the reaction I got was tepid at best, then I won't do that again. You're never going to hear me talk about dental floss for the rest of my life. But it is really good for you. Please do it. <laughs> and sometimes I want... Ugh, now we're getting really... I, now that I'm saying this out loud, it sounds very depressing. Sometimes I want my digital life to disappear. You know, just want to stop doing it. Just take a break. But then I get worried that if I do that, then I will no longer be important or valuable. That if I don't post, maybe I stop existing. It's like this, this digital version of if a tree falls in the woods. 
So now we get to the point, if we're doing a, nor a normal narrative act structure, we had one, two, three, right? <laughs> Beginning, middle, and end, where I give you a conclusion, something to take away, and you go, yeah, that was worth the price of admission. But I don't. Uh, I don't have that at all. But I can tell you things that I've, I've learned from this whole experience, this whole journey that I've spent with six years of living on the internet. And that is that reality to me is another platform to share. It's another place where I can express myself and what, what I've become online is more of a character that I play. So a, a, an example of this would be that I have a really lovely uh, girlfriend. She's very cool. I think she's fantastic. And I love her to death. She's dope as heck. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, so we're using heck. Heck, heck, heck. Haha. <laughs> and uh, our relationship exists between us. We made a conscious decision to not share our relationship on the internet. She doesn't appear in videos of mine. We don't like Snapchat each other or whatever kids do these days. He says, but he's also a young whippersnapper. And that exists between us and our friends. And so my social circle in real life is much smaller than my digital life, but it still is important, but I don't have to filter it through a wide net. It's just mine, and I really like that. It's important to me. So to go back to the beginning about why I, I didn't want to be here, I thought about it a lot, actually, when I was talking to Vlad on Skype, and I was like, oh, this is actually quite fitting, because I didn't want to be here because I was scared of sharing myself. Which, hey, here we are. But when it comes to sharing oneself, um, I think about it <laughs> in, the, in the way that uh, it's really not. Don't, the slides are for humor. Don't take them too seriously. When, when I think about sharing myself on these platforms, the hope is that even though I am a character on this stage right now, this isn't the real me, really. It's a version of myself, but it isn't myself. <laughs> that if I share enough of me in different places across different platforms in different ways, that hopefully they will come together, they will coalesce into myself. That's all I got. Thank you. Thanks!